Hello guys, round four of trying to do this video, having all sorts of issues with the video stopping in the middle and I figure out what's going on. So we got that all figured out, we're good. So, all right. What I wanted to talk about today is something that seems to be a hot topic in prepping right now. I've seen it on a couple other channels and God knows my inbox is blowing up with it. Uh, and it's on financial questions, financial prepping. And so I kind of wanted to give you this guy's thoughts on some of the topics. They may differ from other people, and that's fine. Not all of us have the same thoughts, but I'll give you my reasoning. Uh, as a lot of you know, I spent seven years as a broker working on Wall Street. So I have a tendency to think I'm smarter than the average bear on this one. You know, not a genius by any means, but, you know, I walk the walk and talk the talk here. So, all right. So the first topic I want to get into, and a lot of questions coming into my email on this is, hey, Pinball, I want, you know, do you think I should get out of my 401k, get out of my IRA, uh, but I'm afraid of the taxes, the penalties, the fees, yada, 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 you know, and basically the question I'm understanding here is people are afraid of the volatility of the market, which I totally get, okay? You know, we're seeing, again, these wild swings. Are we going to get a stimulus? Are we not going to get a stimulus? Is the, vi is the vaccine working? Is the vaccine not working? Who knows? Okay. So I get it. Here's the catch, go though, guys. You cannot sell your 401k. You cannot sell your IRA. They are not investments. They are the vehicles. Okay. And the best way I can explain it is like this. Okay. What the, what, they're the vehicles. The investments are the mutual funds, the stocks, the bonds, whatever. In it. It's like your car, okay? You own a car. You're the driver. Passengers come in. Passengers get out. You know, change passengers all the time. Wife, kids, family, friends, whatever it would be. Okay? And they're all in and out all the time. You're changing the contents of the vehicle, but you still own that same car. It's not changing, okay? It's the same thing with your 401k or your IRA. The 401k is the vehicle. That's not changing. It's the stuff that's inside it that can, okay? It is very easy and does not take taxes, penalties, fees, or whatever it is to move your S&P 500 fund, your mid-market, you know, uh, mid-cap 400 fund, whatever it would be, into cash, okay? Money market in your 401k, in your IRA. Doesn't trigger any penalties, doesn't trigger any taxes, because you haven't taken the money out of the retirement plan, okay? Now, if you take a withdrawal from your 401k or your IRA, yeah, that tra that triggers taxes, penalties, and fees, okay? You can't put the money in your checking account. You can't put $100 bills in your wallet without triggering that. As long as it, as long as it stays in the 401k or the IRA, no tax issues, no penalties, no fees, okay? So that being said, now, Granted, you moved money market, which is going to be, you know, interest rates, depending on your balance, anywhere from one-tenth to one percent to one percent, okay? You know, if you got $100,000 in it, it's going to stay at $100,000. You're going to get to $100,005, $100,010, okay? You, you, but what you're not going to have is like what we had in February, March this year, where your $100,000 all of a sudden was $65,000, okay? And if you're nearing retirement age or whatever it is, now is not the time to be taking risks with your investments, okay? Now, by now, you should be, you know, pretty much, okay, this is what I got. Let's keep it stable. Don't want to lose anything. All right. So that's the take on that. All right. If you've got any further questions on that stuff, feel free to shoot me an email. I'll try to explain it a little bit better to you. But I mean, that's it. You can easily move to cash within those investments and not have to experience market volatility. You can turn off Fox Business, you can turn off CN, CNBC, whatever it would be. Just, you, you can not pay attention to it for a while till the world settles down a little bit. You know, whichever way we go till the world settles down. All right, <clears throat> next thing I wanna talk about, precious metals. This is a topic of conversation everywhere, okay? And everybody's got a different opinion. I'm going to use logic to it again. And when I'm talking about precious metals, I'm just going to look at copper, silver, and gold. I'm not talking about platinum and palladium and all this other stuff. Okay. So start with copper. All right. My problem with copper is this. It takes so much copper to have any value. All right. Now, we all know copper. Pennies aren't made of copper anymore. They used to be. 
Why aren't pennies made of copper? Because it took 1.2 cents worth of copper to make a coin worth one cent. Okay, losing losing aspiration. You know, only the government does that forever and gets away with it. You know, the rest of us go broke. But for the sake of argument, let's just take a roll of pennies, 50 cents. Okay, put that roll of pennies and let's say it's all copper. That roll of pennies is 50 cents. So you need two rolls of pennies to make a dollar. Okay, you need 20 rolls of pennies to make ten dollars. You need 200 rolls of pennies to make $100. You need 2,000 rolls of pennies to make 1,000 bucks. And you know a lot of people are saying, you know, have at least a month's worth of bills in uh, precious metals, okay? I understand that logic, kind of makes sense, at least put something on it. My bills are about $2,000 a month. That means I need to have 4,000 rolls of pennies to pay one month's bills. How much storage space does 4,000 rolls of pennies take up in my house, okay? That's for one month, let's say it's 12, okay? Now I need a half a million rolls of pennies to pay a year's worth of my bills? Really, come on, okay. Copper doesn't make sense just because it's too small of a value for the physical size of which it is, okay? So that's why I'd say avoid copper. Gold, flip side, exact opposite problem. Gold is worth, you know, an ounce of gold is about $2,000, okay? You could store in a little tiny box lots of money, okay? Here's a couple of problems with gold. First off, if you're going out and buying gold right now, gold is pretty much at or near its all-time high. So, you know, you're committing the cardinal sin of investing. You're buying high and inevitably selling low, and you're going to go, gee, why did I lose money, Okay. This is for all the fans of Rick Newman on Yahoo or Jim Cramer on CNBC, okay? If you want to learn how to lose money, watch those guys. You know, Cramer's wonderful. He's this great hedge fund manager whose career stock wrecking picker is 47% correct picks. That means 53% of the time he's wrong, okay? So basically, I have better luck picking stocks by flipping a coin than I do by listening to him, okay? That's just reality, guys. So don't even get me started on Rick Newman. This guy's record is, you know, zero, uh, you know, forget it. Uh, so, you know, gold has that problem, okay, is that you're, it's very expensive. And then with that comes the problem of using it. Now, if we ever get to the point of having to use precious metals, that means SHTF has gone full blown, Okay. So in that kind of scenario, you can imagine that the price of everything is going to change, right? That acre of land out there that you've had your eye on that's been 10,000 bucks may now be 100 bucks because the guy has no food. You know, he's trying to sell anything he can to put some food in his family's belly, okay? So that's the thing. On the other side of the thing, that loaf of bread that was a dollar may be now 50 bucks because food is now a hot commodity, okay? But the problem with it either way is how do you make how do you make change for gold? Now granted, you can buy increments of an ounce in the way of gold, okay? But if you're doing, you know, you're not gonna walk around with these little test tubes of gold flakes and I'm gonna go, you know, counting out with a tiny little razor blade going one, two, three flakes, and the guy with the scale there weighing it going, no, you owe me one more flake, okay? Uh, that it's it's just not a convenient transaction, so it's not going to work well. Major purchases, sure. You want to go buy the Empire State Building after the world collapses? Hey, you probably get it with you know a few gold coins, and you'll be good. All right. So that being said, so not a big fan of gold in that way. Simple. It's too expensive. You're buying at the top, and it's not going to be very usable uh, in an SHTF situation, which is why you'd be buying it in the first place. So that leaves silver, okay? Silver, in my opinion, is, you know, in the uh, three bears, the just right scenario. It's not going to take, you know, an entire bedroom to store your silver for a decent amount of wealth in there in physical form. And it's also not so expensive that, you know, it's it's not going to be convenient to use. Silver is about 20 bucks an ounce right now. Somewhere thereabouts fluctuates every day, obviously, okay? So you figure a one ounce silver coin is the equivalent of about a $20 bill. So you need a bag of, bag of potatoes and a loaf of bread. Okay, you know what? Go buy three bags of potatoes and two loaves of bread. That's 20 bucks, poof. Give the guy the silver coin, off you go with your potatoes and bread. You're good, okay? No change needed, anything like that. So if, there's, if you're going to get into the precious metals market, silver is probably the way to go. 
for, for, for an SHTF situation just because it's usable, okay? The other side is, let's say you buy silver now and no SHTF situation happens, okay? The world somehow miraculously gets back to some sort of semblance of order and we go on with our regular day. Silver is at about 50% of its all-time high. So you're not looking like you are with gold for, gee, I need fresh all-time highs for this to increase in value. No, you're just kind of looking at to trade within its normal historical range. And if it goes to the upside of that range, you're making a profit out of it. Okay. So that being said, so there's a lot of benefits to silver. So for all those that have asked me, what do you think about precious metals? Silver, yes. Everything else, no. That's my opinion. Okay. But you know what opinions are like. Last one, and I see this question all over the place. Cryptocurrency, what do you think about crypto, pinball? Okay, a fool and his money are soon parted. Okay, crypto has got to be the most idiotic Ponzi scheme I have ever seen that people are dumb enough to fall for, okay? Bitcoin, Litecoin, whatever, pick one of them. They were all created out of thin air with, I mean, there's nothing backing them. I mean, you, you know, you got Krishna over sitting in Sri Lanka, you know, in the back room sitting on some rice paddy, tapping on a computer going, <laughs> look at this, I'm going to steal a bunch of people's money today, you know, and that's literally what it is, okay? And I hear these people go, I bought, I bought Bitcoin last year at $6,000 and look where it is now. Yeah, it's a $23,000 today, okay? You quadrupled your money on paper. Find somebody who's going to give you $23,000 in spendable currency for that, okay? Good luck, all right? Remember, you know, something's only worth what somebody else will give you for it. I wouldn't, I wouldn't give you two spits for crypto. So to me, your crypto is worth nothing. You want a loaf of bread with me? Don't come to me with Bitcoin and say, hey, I'll give you, all, you know, five Bitcoin for it. You know, that's worth $120,000. I'll be like, no, it's worth nothing. Uh, you know, remember, you know... At, Granted, we're not on the gold standard anymore or anything like that, but at least the dollar, and yes, I agree, we're going to get devaluation and inflation or stagflation or whatever, you know, whichever direction we're going to go with the dollar. It's at least backed by the full faith and credit of the U.S. government, which is a lot, as, as much as you say about the government, I still have more trust in the U.S. government than I do in the full faith and credit of Krishna over in Sri Lanka. Uh, so remember all it takes for crypto for you to be wiped out completely. Is some guy to go tap, 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 and you're out, gone. Your Bitcoin's worth zero. Okay. Other side of the fence on crypto. Okay. And I hear these stories too, you know, oh, the government's going to move to all cryptocurrency. That's the only way you're going to get your VA check, your social security check, your stimulus check, whatever it's going to be. The government's going to do all cryptocurrency. Okay. Let me set the record straight, guys. That ain't happening. There's a 0% chance of doing it. The, com the country cannot go, okay, effective January 20th at an inauguration day, dollars are no longer worth anything, and we are now using Bitcoin only as the currency in the United States. You think the election's going to throw the economy in, in turmoil? That would just completely destroy everything. Okay. So... There's the first part. It's, it's not. You may be able to have a parallel currency, but you certainly aren't going to swap, swap out one for the other. Okay, and it's certainly not going to be Bitcoin. Trust me, the U.S. government would make their own coin. Okay, because they want the control. If that happened, big if that happened. Okay. Here's the other point. All right. Oh, we're going to move to all cryptocurrency, guys. We're already there. We have been for twenty plus years. Okay, and I say this for, for this reason. How much cash has run through your hand this month? I mean, literal, greenbacks. How many tens, fives, tens, twenties, fifties, whatever it is, have passed through your little fingers this, this month? Then how much money have you spent? Okay. You paid your mortgage or your rent on the first of the month, the electric bill, the phone bill, the gas bill, the water bill, uh, you know, the kid who delivers the newspapers, whatever it would be. Okay, you've gone to the grocery store, you've gone to Walmart, you've put gas in the, gas in the car, you added, I think of all the different places you spent money. Then think of how many of those places that you actually said 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70. You didn't. You go, here's my plastic card, swipe or tap, 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 tap into Amazon, put your credit card number in, and miraculously the funds digitally, crypto, transferred from your bank to the vendor, and you never touched them. 
So we are already in a crypto society. You get direct deposit, you pay all your bills electronically, you pay for your company. Your, so the US dollar is a cryptocurrency, guys. So if we're gonna have a cryptocurrency, we already got one, okay? Yeah, maybe they just start printing less dollars and coins. Well, we've been hearing about coin shortage for a year. Hmm, would that maybe give anybody a reason to think about why? We don't use them anymore. We don't need as much of them. So don't worry about some of the craziness, the conspiracy theories you hear that the, we're moving to a total cryptocurrency. That's that's just a complete conspiracy theory. Anybody who, you know, is going after that, you know, they're, they're a little bit out in left field on that one. I mean, it, it doesn't make any common sense and it doesn't make any logistical sense. So... So I hope that answers some financial questions today. Uh, hopefully I can clean out my inbox from, <laughs> from this video. Uh, I know this wasn't the exciting one, but I did want to get those questions because it seems like a lot of people had to answer them. Uh, so that's what we got for today. Have a good one, y'all. Pinball out.